Yo, yo, yo. What you do in the big unit? I ask you to make a video of them. You make a video of them, of course. Hey, Brenton here. Welcome back to the Effortless Swimming YouTube channel. In today's video, we are looking at Sam big unit. Long. Now, on a recent video that we did on Lionel Sanders, I got a comment from Sam himself saying, can you make a video on me? So of course I'm gonna do it. Now, in the in Lionel's video, one of the things that I talked about was his Stop Sucking at Swimming YouTube series, where he, he's been making videos about his attempt to improve his swimming and get down with that front pack and get down to being a 23 minute uh, half iron man swimmer. Now, one of the, the things that we saw on the weekend at uh, St. George, there was an amazing race between Lionel and Sam, essentially within a hundred meters of each other the entire race. And it came down to almost a sprint finish where they finished with, within five seconds of each other. And it's one of the best races that I've ever seen in a half distance Ironman. And we saw the two guys absolutely give their all. If you haven't seen the video of the last 5K run, go and check it out. I'll put a link to that below. Uh, I assume most of you have probably seen it if you follow Lionel or you follow Sam. Just an amazing show of heart and effort that these guys put in. Now, I thought it'd be really timely to make this video on Sam's stroke. So what I'm gonna look at here is a couple of clips that he's posted on his own YouTube channel, which you can follow below. And then we're gonna have a look at his stroke and see where he might be able to find a little bit of time by improving his technique. But what I wanna preface that with is he has done a really good job at getting to where he is because we saw at St. George, he was only about two minutes off the lead pack. He's from a 25 minute 26, uh, 1900. And uh, the lead guys were, I think 23, 15 or thereabouts. So within about two minutes there, he was about 20 seconds behind Lionel. So um, really good um, swim from what I can tell by by Sam at that event, which is great to see. And he's talked about improving his uh, work on his body position, his breathing, settling that down, and making sure that he's not turning too far, and also increasing his stroke rate, because uh, I, I think in the past, he's just been a very long and slow swimmer. Uh, and so he's done a great job at those things. So I just wanna see, you know, what could he perhaps look at improving from where he is now, based on some footage that we've taken. Now, let's have a look at this video here. Um, and I think this is a good insight into what he's had to change about his mindset to swimming. The biggest thing is that it's, it's about a mindset shift. So it's not, I'm no longer coming to the pool to get fitness. I'm no longer coming to the pool to bang out 40 times 100, eight times 500, all on tight intervals, all with little rest. Um, I'm here to modify my stroke and to make it so that I can swim more efficient. And that's gonna get my fitness up eventually. So. That's been hard for me because I like to come and I like to feel like I get a good workout, but it's it's a lot more of like doing drills. And, and that's something that is so common among triathletes when I'm working with them is like you don't do triathlon because you hate to suffer. You do triathlon because you love to work hard and you love to, um, to push yourself in, in training and in racing. And so to have that mindset shift to go from working hard, working hard, working hard, to having to slow down a bit, focus on the technical aspects, and to to focus you know, primarily just on refining the, the technique and even you know, going to drills and that sort of thing, it, it can be a hard shift to make because you feel like oh, I'm not getting the same training that maybe my competitors are. And yeah, it's difficult to make at the time. But if you can just take the time, and he's talking about the start of his sort of build up and the start of his season, so he, where he has got more of a technical focus, you've still got to do the work, obviously. But particularly at the start of the season, by slowing it down and, and focusing on the, on the technique side of things, that's what's gonna help you uh, improve going forwards. Because most people, if they're training at his level, it's not the fitness that's really gonna change. It's the, the technical part of it that's gonna make the biggest difference because he's probably just, you know, probably hit a wall with his current technique that's stopped him from going faster. And so it does take some time to rewire the brain and rewire um, those those motor patterns in order to, to make them more efficient for swimming. So um, it's worthwhile doing, and yeah, it can sort of suck and it can go against what feels like needs needs to be done, but more times than not, it's, it's what I've seen uh, that's helped people get better. So it's, um, it's good to see him um, slow down and take that approach. What are you thinking about while swimming? <laughs> oh. I, I think it's like a sensory deprivation chamber, so my mind just wants to wander off and 
think about how fast of a runner Morgan Pearson is or how I have to race Lionel Sanders or blah, 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 blah. But instead, I just try and focus on my mechanics. And, and I keep saying it, but the big three for me, it's body position. It's a good, strong finish. And then it's uh, getting my breath under control. So I spend a lot of hours of the day thinking about those three little components. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one of my favorite things about swimming is there's no other things to listen to. You can really just go deep into how you're feeling and you, yeah, your mind might wander off a little bit, but you can really just center in and focus in on, uh, on the stroke. And so for him, it's good. He's kept it simple with three things and he's done a really good job at those three things. If we look at his body position, which we will in a moment, he's sitting nicely in the water. Um, his breathing's come under control because in some videos he's talked about that he used to turn too far, get a big gasp of air, and then come back. And so if you can settle your stroke in a way where you're, it comes always comes back to your breathing, then that is how you'll be able to sustain your effort throughout a, a longer swim. I was listening to a uh, an interview recently with Andrew Lauderstein, who's a bronze medalist. He uh, got third to uh, Michael Phelps in the 100 butterfly at the Olympic Games. And he said that his coaches said to him in the final, before he started the final is, don't try too hard. Now you're thinking, all right, it's the Olympics, you wanna go out, you wanna work hard. But with butterfly, it's very much a timing stroke, where if you get the timing right, you're gonna swim well. And so it's very easy to rush it and, and lose your timing. But you know, freestyle is not too much different, it's very much about the timing and the rhythm. And if you try too hard, you're going to not only have your heart rate up and it's gonna be harder to sustain that for longer, but you'll also find that your timing will come out. So it's very hard to kind of sit sit at that level where you're putting in effort, but you're not sort of you know, spinning the wheels. So uh, it's good to be able to focus on the breathing and make sure that stays under control because then you have uh, a lot more options throughout the race and you're not just going to burn all, all of your candles straight away. The challenge and the pursuit of excellence in the water is is, it's just an absolutely amazing thing to be committing myself to. And uh, like, I care more about this than I said, like the bike or even the run, because it's like, those have always come pretty naturally to me. And this is like, I have to, every single second I get faster, I've earned, you know? And that's, it's hard, but it's also, at the end of the day, that's the most rewarding thing you can ever ask for. In that interview there, if you watch the, the whole thing uh, in, in one of his episodes there, he gets he gets quite emotional when he's talking about um, what he's going through when he's improving his swimming. Uh, because as he said, his bike and his run becomes really natural. And so the swimming is just something that he's really had to concentrate on, but also just be quite very humble about. And I see it a lot at clinics and working with people all the time. Like for a lot of people, there's, there's shame attached to their existing stroke. And you might hear that and think, well, why would you be ashamed of what, like your, your technique? But you know, for a lot of people, they've maybe swum for a long time and they know that their stroke's not efficient, but they've never taken the step or taken the jump to maybe have it analyzed or to, to work with someone. And that can often be if they've had a coach who's told them like, you suck, you, you're like, your stroke's no good, you're inefficient, and they haven't actually shown them a way to change it. They've just told them how crap they are at swimming. So there can be a lot of shame attached to, to that. And with Sam, like he's swimming with a lot of very quick and very good swimmers, swimmers that are better than him. And so for him to come in as a professional triathlete, he's probably the fittest guy in there. You know, he's, he's got to be quite humble about where he's at. And so there can be some, um, often some, some shame attached to how people are swimming. So if, um, and that's why I think I, you know, you see him in this, this interview, he does start to tear up a bit um, if you watch the whole thing. And it's uh, what I like about this is he's open and he's honest about it. And it's great to see someone at, at his level, similar to Lionel, where he's, he's, ha he's happy to share that. And I think that's what makes it such compelling viewing. So uh, I really appreciate that he's able to, to share that and, um, and articulate it in a very good way there. So um, let's have a look at, um, at Sam's stroke. And I'm just gonna focus on kind of three things where I, I think he may be able to, to improve just based on the footage that I can see in his uh, YouTube channel. And um, yeah, there might be some, some other things there. And um, these are just some things that I could identify based on uh, the footage that I've got from his channel. All right, so one of the first things that I noticed that would be worthwhile just trying to change would be a small aspect of his kick. Now with his kick, we can see at times, particularly with his right foot, that it has a tendency to kick out, uh, to turn outwards. So I think we see it. 
uh, in a front view here in a second. All right, so here. So if we have a look at, at this here, you'll see that at times, if you're looking at the right foot here, it has a tendency to turn outwards right now, there. So you can see that turn out of the foot. Now, it, it, it doesn't make a massive difference, but it makes enough of a difference. So what we wanna try and do with the feet is we wanna keep them you know, roughly pointed and turned slightly inwards instead of turning outwards, which is happening right here. And one of the reasons for that is that if the foot turns outwards, it obviously increases the, the drag compared to if the, if the foot was turned in, because if the foot stays remained in, it will stay roughly within the line of the body. But if it turns out, it comes outside of that and acts as a bit of drag. And it, we know it doesn't look like much, but all that little bit of drag starts to add up, especially over the course of a half Ironman swim. And the same thing happens a bit on his left-hand side. And there is a shot of it that I wanna show you here where we did see it turning outwards. So I'm just gonna check it out here. It's one of these side ones here. Okay, so there we go. So you can see it here, that left foot turns out to the side. So you can see the toes are pointed like right off there. Now it's okay for them to like, they're not gonna point, we don't want them to point down obviously, but we want them to point a bit more back behind him instead of um, out to the side there. So that's what we wanna try and just, just eliminate, keep them turned inwards. Um, so how could he do it? Look, he might do a little bit of swimming with a, a pool buoy between his ankles and uh, an ankle strap around his ankles and just to sort of feel um, where the toes are pointed and just if he can notice the main thing is if he can notice when the foot turns outwards that's the first step the second one would be to okay when you feel it turn outwards just see if you can keep it turned inwards there and I've, I've done a little bit of a self-experiment with this because I do see it sometimes when I'm analyzing swimmers at clinics is that um, when we see that happen, I want to see oh, how much does it slow you down? And so for me, when I've been doing like some you know, relatively fast hundreds, I'll do it just with my normal kick. And then I'll do it when I'm actively turning the feet out like that. And I see about a one to two second difference per hundred when I turn my feet out. So for me, it, it limits my speed by one to two seconds per hundred. And yeah, look, it's not scientific, but um, that's the result that I have seen with, um, with my own speed. Um, when I make that change in the stroke. So that would be one um, thing to look at. Now, the other thing that um, that I was looking at here is that he's got a very good catch on his, uh, I think it's his right arm side. Yeah, on his right arm. And he, he said that you know, one of the things he's, he's worked on is just getting into that catch pretty quickly. So I really like what he's doing here. He's, he's getting a nice catch there. That's a, that's a good armful of water um, that he's that he's got. So great, great job on that right hand catch. I really like that. And when we look at the front on view, you'll see that in terms of the angles, it also looks great. Like there at the end of the catch, if we measure that angle from there to there, the angle that we want is 100 to 120 degrees. You'll see it's 114. So that's within range indicating it's a good catch. Um, so I really like how he's getting that right arm catch. The biggest opportunity at the moment is on the left arm. Now, if we look at the angle from the from the front, it's not too bad. So he's there. Um, in terms of the angle, he's about 145 there. Let's just check out another stroke just to make sure that we're you know, about right. So there. So that one's probably a little bit better. Um, 130. So we want it to be 100 to 120. So how we might want to see that is just sort of elbow up a little bit higher and wider perhaps and just getting that hand in a little bit more. But from the side, that's probably the best angle to view it from. We just wanna get more into that sort of higher elbow catch. Meaning if we go there, if we were to draw a line from the shoulder to the fingertips, you'll notice that that elbow's a little bit below it. Meaning that the forearm is sort of facing, it's facing back behind him a bit but not quite as well as it is with his right, where that forearm's sort of angling back behind him a bit more. So really the biggest opportunity for him in terms of the catch would be focusing on that, that left arm. So with that in mind, it might be worth doing just you know, one or two drills that isolate the catch on that arm to help him work towards that 
higher elbow position. Now remember, high elbow doesn't mean elbow near the surface. It's more like an elbow forwards position. So we want that hand and forearm to drop down a bit. Now, if you're looking to work on this yourself, have a look at our five day catch challenge where the guarantee is you'll improve your 100 meter time by five seconds. I'll put a link to that below if you haven't gone through it yet, um, but that's a really good way to break down and improve your, um, your own catch. Now, one of the drills from that program is single arm scoop drill. Now I'll put it, you can see this here. I think that's a great drill um, for him to perhaps do on that left arm because that way he's focused on the left arm catch um, and it's working primarily on that. And it's it's just you know, breaking down that, that aspect of it. So if he were to do that as part of his warm up every session and we made sure that he was actually doing the drill 100% correct and he was really getting that high elbow position within the drill, that's gonna start to change that muscle memory a bit. And over the course of a couple of weeks and a couple of months, we should see that really uh, making a difference in his in his stroke. So there's there's that part of it. Now the other thing that um, that I was thinking could be worthwhile too is on his in this stroke here when he takes a breath, he probably rotates his shoulders just a little bit far. So if we're looking at this this here, you'll see that the angle through the shoulders. That's not a great drawing of it. Okay, it's around, no, it's not quite right. Um, the angle of his shoulders is is a little bit too far on the side. So if we look at this here, you'll see he's around about 60 degrees at its furthest point. Now, for most people, for most, most good freestylers, we'll see that they'll rotate to about 35 to 45 degrees through the shoulders. Now, the reason that we don't wanna go much further than this is because, one, it can impact your catch because it, if your shoulders are on the side, makes it a bit more awkward on the shoulders to get that catch. But the other thing too, is that um, it can also kind of um, cause you, it can also make it a little bit longer to take that stroke. Meaning like, yeah, it's gonna take a bit longer to get all the way on the side and then come back. So he might be able to get a slightly faster stroke rate without much extra effort, without changing his distance per stroke by just bringing it back to 35 to 45 degrees. So when he's getting that breath, yeah, rotation's good, but you can also go too far. So see if you can just reduce that a little bit on the, the breathing side. Um, that'd be something that's just worth experimenting a bit with. And look, I'm only talking from like, you know, this front on footage, I don't see it all the time, um, but it does just look that way that he's a little bit far on the side um, there. Now, as I said, doesn't need to change it a whole lot, um, but we do see with most, you know, most good freestylers that they are a little bit flatter through the shoulders. So that's around, um, Oops, that's around 35 degrees there, I think. So um, that's where we wanna to get to. So look, they're really the, the main things. The other one that I kind of noticed when he's swimming at a slightly slower pace as well, is that sometimes the, um, the left hand was entering a little, bit, um, a little bit close to the head and probably as he starts to fatigue a bit more. So you see this, um, this entry here as he comes through. No, sorry, it's the right arm, that's what I mean. Okay, now with the right arm, sometimes it enters in a way where you'll see that it's a little bit close as in that wrist is a bit bent. So the hand and forearm are not straight and connected. They're a little bit bent. So if he is able, or, and so when he's able to keep the hand and forearm together, which he does on some strokes, he maintains the speed a whole lot better. Because what happens when you enter too close here is that it's sort of like you're you don't put on the brakes, but it slows you down because you're pushing against the oncoming water because the hand ends up act, you know, acting as a, as, as a break, it creates the drag. Whereas if you can enter, um, you know, kind of like he is with that left one, how that's together, that's a better entry. And if I play this in normal speed here, see how it kind of slows down when that right hand enters because it enters that little bit early and we can see that like a little bit of a bend in the wrist. Now look, of all the things, that's gonna probably have one of the least um, impacts on his speed. I'd focus mostly on the catch, but if we're looking at one percenters, that's certainly one of them, just making sure that we enter hand and forearm straight together and um, perhaps that little bit further out in front on that right hand side at times. When he's going faster, it seems like it's pretty good. It's just when he's going a bit slower, it seems, or when he's fatigued, that seems to happen. So um, they are really the the main things that I'm able to, to spot there. And look, from the front, you might notice there's a bit of crossover and that sort of thing, but look, um, of all the things, um, yeah, I think those main ones are the ones that I've, I've mentioned. So. Hope you enjoyed that um, that video of Sam. If you're not if you're not following his channel, go and follow him. Um, an athlete really similar to Lionel in terms of is willing to share it all. 
trains his ass off uh, from what I can can see and um, and seems like a really genuine and good guy and I really want to see him succeed um, with the swim and so that's why I appreciate guys um, guys like him making these videos and sort of pouring their heart out about um, what they're going through in order to improve it so um, appreciate him making those videos and sharing that stuff and uh, if you did enjoy this video please subscribe and uh, you yeah, know we make videos on uh, improving your technique. So uh, if you enjoyed this, then please subscribe and I'll see you next week with a, another video.